In this episode, we are moving on to our second DVD in this mini Fulshi collection, with that one being The Red Monks. This is a 1989 Italian horror film directed by Gianni Martucci, who hasn't really done much of anything. He's done a few other films, like Trauma, which is just spelt really weird. But that's about your lot, really. He's not done much. This film is apparently based on a Mario Bava film, Lisa and the Devils, and also a short story by Luciana Anna Spacca. There's also some sort of weird mystery surrounding this film, but we'll touch on that a little bit later on. Now, I know absolutely nothing about this. Last episode, the Fulci film was actually pretty decent, so hopefully we can continue that this episode. Let's have a look, shall we? I like the way you play. It's really marvelous. You're just trying to flatter an old lady. I'm not that. Bonjour, madame. Are you French, Lucille? Oui, madame. Fromacé. The film starts with a dude who's inherited a castle. After chasing a naked woman around it, he's decapitated. Cut to 50 years in the past, and the previous castle owner finds a woman who's trespassing on castle grounds and painting a picture. So, of course, he marries her, and they move into the castle together. But it turns out this dude's part of some sort of ancient cult, and they require virgin blood. Looks like his wife is next on the donor list. Can she escape the crazy cult? Or is there something else at play? This film is painfully tedious. It's got a bare bones plot that is just stretched over 85 minutes and it's full of padding where people are just slowly wandering around different parts of the castle. It is maddeningly boring. Require the blood of a virgin. The acting and dubbing isn't great, but it isn't entertainingly bad either, it's just sort of there. There's also a distinct lack of gore in this, unless you're counting those awful paper mache heads or a blood splattered sickle. There's a lot of nudity though, so there's that. That's about it. It's nothing really worth mentioning, it's there. The titular Red Monks barely make an appearance as well. They're probably in it for less than five minutes combined, and it's a shame as well, because they're probably the most interestingly designed thing in the whole film. There's this really bad rubber spider. Now, you can tell that there's not much to talk about in this film when I'm bringing up a bloody rubber spider, but it keeps showing up, and all it does is just sort of pathetically wiggle about and not really do much or anything. But it's in it way more than you'd think it should be. It doesn't do anything. There's no consequence to it being there. Probably the only nice things I can say about this film is the castle set looks pretty good and the camera's in focus. And that's about your lot, really. Well, what's your decision? Come on. Now, you may have noticed that we're looking at a film in the Lucio Fulci collection and I haven't really mentioned the man himself yet, outside of saying that this film is in that collection. Seems pretty strange, right? Well, it turns out whether or not Fulci actually had anything to do with this film is a complete mystery. So, way back when this film was coming out, he was originally credited as working on special effects, which apparently is completely false, because apparently, this is all just what I've read, he never actually appeared on set at any point. Later on, the director went to say that he had had some sort of agreement with Fulci, where he agreed to appear on posters and DVD VHS covers as a presented by type of deal. Again though, Fulci has gone on to say that this is all a lie, he said he never agreed to anything, he said he didn't even know the film's existence until he saw it in the local VHS shop with his name plastered on the top of it. Now, there are two 
options, I think. There are two variants for how this story actually played out. One, it's just a massive scam by the people who made the film to try and sell more copies, put a popular dude's name on it and see if it sells more. Or, Fulci did have something to do with the making of it, but was so dissatisfied with the end product that he's distanced himself from it. He has gone on record saying how much he hates the film, so he has seen it. And you know what, I can completely agree with you, Fulci, it is a terrible film. But who knows? Who knows? It's a bit of a mystery still. Um, he's more commonly today credited as having produced the film. Even that, though, is up for debate. They don't agree with arthritis. Okay, time for the print, and it's great. Again, really clear image, really clear sound, good contrast. I can't complain, really. I said it in a Cat in the Brain review, and I'll say it again here. I am pretty impressed with these hardcore prints, you know. And on the disc, nothing much really to shout about. Chapter Select, Image Gallery, Fulshi Filmography, which this film isn't part of, I guess. Uh, a trailer for this film and some hardcore trailers. Standard stuff, really. Okay, case time. And there isn't really much to say about it. The description reads pretty well. Plenty of screenshots. Uh, the cover censors the nipple on the front, which saves me a job. And the runtime once again unfortunately it is off this time by five minutes the film is actually 85 minutes long standard stuff really though uh, the opening logo plays again with the menu sound which is it's so weird that it does this something very very quick for the video um look i cannot pause this film this dvd is just i'm pressing like I can pull up that, but it won't let me pause, it won't let me fast forward, it won't let me rewind. I have not seen this <laughs> with one of these DVDs before, that is insane. Luckily I'm not missing anything. Right, the film's starting. Okay, never mind, it's letting me pause it now, uh, for some reason. I don't know if it was just the opening credits. Let's jump back and see if it was just the credits that it wouldn't... Right, so it starts playing naturally after the credit. So I cannot pause this film during the credits, but I can now the film started, and I can fast forward and rewind and what have you. I've never seen that before, that is really weird. I wonder if the end credits will let me pause as well. Anyway, back to the film. Overall then, this was absolutely awful. It's slow, boring, the cult's barely in it, there's no violence, and it just comes across as lazy. It's not even funny bad, you won't even get a giggle from this, it's just boring. Uh, I would definitely not recommend this film at all, if for some bizarre reason though you are wanting to check it out. Uh, this is pretty much your lot really, this print is fine, this DVD is okay, and if you can find it cheap, great. Anything else though, I couldn't find a Blu-ray knocking about. There was another DVD from the Shriek collection, but as we've mentioned on here before, they tend to just sort of rip other releases versions, so it's probably identical to this one. So if you are wanting to get it, get it as cheap as you can because it's not really worth your time. So yeah, another terrible one, sort of breaking the streak. Oh well, hopefully next episode will be a lot better. And hopefully next episode will actually have something to do with Lucio Fulci. Seeing as this is a Fulci collection and all that. Next episode we are going to be checking out... Enigma.